the atonement, the old covenant, but in the New Testament it says you have the remission of sins. Remission means wiped away, washed out, forgotten about, doesn't exist. Yeah. You don't have an expiration date. Amen. You apply the blood of the Old Testament, it was good for a year. You apply the blood of Jesus, it's good forever. Amen. Just like your prayers, your prayers have no expiration date. They're deathless. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Prayers outlive the life of the prayer. You better be praying for your grandkids that aren't born yet, your great grandkids that aren't born yet, your great great grandkids that aren't born yet, because when you die, those prayers will still be working. So, all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. God bless you. Welcome today to Terry Mize Ministries More Than Conquerors program. We are delighted to be here with you. And as we say so many times when we are in churches ministering, that we've really come, like Jesus said, to wash them with the water oh, of the absolutely. Word of God. Yeah. But really our heart as servants of the Lord is to wash your feet and administer to you and to share with you the comforting words from the Word of God, the power-filled, life-giving words from the Word of God, and to really encourage your faith so you can pray and believe God for miracles. Amen. I mean, that's what that's the bottom line of it all, amen, amen. is that you can be more than a conqueror <laughs> yes, in yes, every yes. area of your life. And we've been talking about this now for several weeks, darling, about uh, the hitchhiker story yeah. and what you did, uh, as many people have asked you, but Brother Terry, how did you really do that? How did you get that miracle? What did you say? What were you praying? What were you thinking? How did you manage that whole dynamic that took over three hours for you, from once the time you picked him up and the time you left him in the mountains of Mexico right. and you were alive and had your vehicle and all your property. <laughs> right, right. Now he didn't, you know? he not only couldn't couldn't kill me, he couldn't rob me. Right. And the, so it was, you know, like James chapter one always says, I love that over there. It says, count it all joy, brethren, when you fall into diverse temptations, sure, you know. Sure. And uh, I had a friend many, many, many years ago, I guess now 35, 40 years ago, I heard her speak at a large convention and she said, you know, since James chapter one says, count it all joy, she said, I felt like the Lord said to me one day, you're the counter, count it any way you want to. And she said, I just decided to count the devil zero and me a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the best way to look at it. If, Like you said, when t telling that story all these 50 years I've heard you tell it, um, you said if you'd ask somebody on the sidelines who's winning. Oh, yeah. It when, looked when the like hitchhiker the devil. had the gun in my ribs yeah. and the church had been standing over here watching. Right. And I was like, who do you think's winning? Well, what do you think they'd have said? Yeah, they'd have said the guy with the gun. The guy with the gun. The guy with the gun. But it's not the guy but with the gun. James says it's the man or woman with the one. word and the name and the blood and the covenant and yeah. the power See, of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we've been Spirit. talking about all those five smooth stones right. that David, uh, you, we're trying to just give you a mental hook. Something to look at, something to think about, something to realize this really works. And it created a miracle on behalf of David when he faced Goliath that he used those things you said you used in yeah, the fight sure. against the hitchhiker's threats to take your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I've used in every testimony I've ever had. Right. Everything I've ever come out of winter, I've, I've used those stuff. Same well, things. You, I would think that you, if you won against someone threatening to take your life sitting right there close combat at the age of 24, I'd think I'm not going to do anything but this. Why well, fix it if it's not no, broke? No, you better believe it. If it worked in a life or death situation, 
it'll work for everything else in life. But you know, I've always said, you know, I, I use the name and the blood and the word and the covenant and the power of the Holy Spirit. And then I did it again. That's the that's the key. Yeah. Then I did it, it again. Then, then I did, I did it, again. it again. I just kept doing it till I finally won. Right. And so it's 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 just uh, it's not one and done. It's just you you keep playing till you win. Well, it's it's the same principle as Romans ten where it says that, you know, faith comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. And we've always preached, you've preached just like every other, everybody else that we know, and hearing, and hearing. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the Word of God. And we've always said, and hearing, and hearing. Yeah, sure. You don't get it the first time. You don't You don't always understand it the first time. Well, that's why advertising has been the biggest business in the world for decades and decades, maybe centuries, uh, because they know, based on Romans, they don't know, it's based on the Bible, but but right. it's based on Romans ten seventeen. Faith comes by hearing, right? And so when they they just tell you over and over and over, I mean, commercial after commercial yeah. on television, Mind commercial after product. commercial on on radio, <laughs> billboards, signs everywhere. Yeah, right. You know, they say when when your throat tickles, you know, and your nose itches, then buy our product, right? And then they tell you that another three thousand times over a period of several months. And so, so you hit the fall or whatever, and the first time your nose itches and your throat your tickles. tickles, you say, I better go get that product. Because you've heard <laughs> exactly. it so much, you yeah. believe it. What That's you right. hear, you tend to believe. Right. Even a habitual liar, they'll, they'll say, well, I've told this so much, I believe it. I've said that so much, I believe it. Well, you just keep saying something. You know, just watch the knotheads on TV, the politicians and the, oh, yeah. the news media. They'll, they'll, they'll tell some lies so many times, they actually you can tell they're starting they to believe it. They actually believe it. And, it's, you know, it is a principle, Terry, that like it's Jesus— It's a spiritual law. It's a spiritual That's law. What it is. Romans ten seventeen is a spiritual law, which means it can stand alone. Jesus said that in Luke 8. We just try to give you as many scriptures as we possibly can mm -hmm. so that you build an but in, arsenal. But in, in context, the Apostle Paul was writing Romans 10 right. to the Roman church, the church at Rome, to tell them how to get people saved. right. That, that was the point of the whole Romans chapter 10. It's all about salvation, getting the heathen saved. And he says, all the heathen have to do to be saved is call on the name of the Lord, but how can they hear, call on someone whom they not believed? How can they believe in someone they've not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? How can the preacher preach because he be sent? So then, verse 17, we understand faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It was about salvation. Right. But because it's a spiritual law, yeah. which means it can stand alone, it doesn't need any help, then you can use it outside of salvation. You can use it for prosperity. Right. You, you know, with, Paul said, with the mouth believeth unto, uh, unto righteousness, and with the heart man believeth unto salvation. We can use it on prosperity, with the mouth man believeth unto prosperity, with the right. heart man believeth right. unto, or confesseth unto prosperity, with the heart man believes unto healing, with the mouth confessions made unto healing, with the heart man believeth unto healing. And you, you can use it on any area on any because area. it's a spiritual law that faith comes by hearing. Well, and hence Jesus' words in Luke 8, where he goes into great detail about taking heed what you hear, yeah. how you and hear, who you hear. Who you hear yeah, you better you know, believe that. Because the hearing part of it, where how and and it it helps you to realize you need to be around people that will say good things, not people that will talk doubt, fear, worry, no, unbelief, poor old me. You need to get I'm them dying out of your to hearing. go. You know that just makes me sick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's why Romans twelve was written over there. Those first three verses that says. Paul's begging people. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And then goes on to say, renewing your mind to the word of God so that you can make the right call, uh, make the right choices, have good judgment about things. And you don't languish over in the areas of being double minded. You know, like James 1 says, you you have a clear perspective of that God wants you healed and not sick and that God is not part of making you sick and that he's, the, that he's the solution, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know, we've been talking about healing now for about, I think it's like the third week. Uh, of course, we talk about it all the time intermittently yeah, right. anyway. Right. But uh, let me just give you some scriptures real quickly just to Please. establish some things. Matthew uh, 4:23 and 24, Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease wow. among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought, they brought, they brought to him uh, all, a double, not a few sick people, not right. some sick people, all sick people <laughs> that were taken with divers diseases and torments. Right. Now listen, these people are in bad shape. And those which were possessed Sorry. with devils and those which were lunatic 
and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. <laughs> this talking about demon possessed That's people. This talking about mentally oppressed people. It's talking about those people. that had uh, those that were crippled, had the palsy, they couldn't walk. So they had to literally carry those people. That's and right. the demon possessed people, they had to may have had to tie up or chain to get them there. This wasn't just like driving up in your air conditioned car to somebody's air conditioned house and honking the horn. They come out and get in the car and you ride to church again. No, they they had to bring these people physically, and he healed them. Healed them all. Isn't that neat? And that's just small. In Matthew eight one through three, when he come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, "Lord, if you will." That's the age old question Christians have, or, or even sinners have. Lord, if you truth. will, I believe you're God. I believe you can heal if you want to, but I don't know if you want to or not. If you will, you wow. can heal me. And you can make me clean. And Jesus answered that question for him and for you and for me and for all eternity. And he said, Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will. He oh, said, if you will. Motion. And Jesus said, I will. Yeah, it was one I motion. Will. Touch his if head you will, you can make me clean. I will. I will. There wasn't any hesitation. He answered that death. for all of us. I will. I, yes. It's his will that you be healed. I Thank will you, Lord be Jesus. thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And then Matthew 8, 5 through 13, Jesus was entered into Capernaum. That's where he lived. And there came to him a centurion beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. He'll make a house call. And the centurion he answered and it. said, Lord, I'm not worthy you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For, now, when he said, Lord, I'm not worthy you come under my roof, the church has hung up on that for years and thought, oh, I'm just not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not. That's not what that centurion <laughs> meant. The centurion meant, I'm a Roman. I'm a Roman soldier. I'm the occupying force in your country. I'm here. I'm despised by everybody. And it's against Jewish law for a Roman to come into your house, for an Italian, who, who, who you think are dogs, uh, to come into your house. So it's unlawful for me to do that. So therefore, your your laws and your people think I'm unworthy to come in your house. So this don't cause a problem here. Right. Just speak the word only. He said, because, and here's how he says, I know this will work. Because he said, I am a man under authority. That's so wonderful. Jesus, he's a Roman centurion. He's under what authority from Caesar and from the from his superiors. Right. And then he has men under him that he's in authority over. Right. Because if you're under authority, you're also in authority. And he didn't say, I'm a man in authority. He said, I'm a man under authority. So he said, I, I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. I say to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard that, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith not in Israel. He said, Among all the Jews, I hadn't found as much faith as this Gentile has, wow. this Roman, this dog, this Italian. Uh, and he said, uh, uh, he said, many, uh, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out to outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of wow. teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, now go your way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And My his servant goodness. was healed in the self same hour. Well, so Jesus spoke there with, the yeah. word. Well, he was standing there with Jesus. Exactly. That boy exactly. was healed. Matthew 8, 14, Jesus was coming to Peter's house. He saw his wife's mother, Peter's mother-in-law, sick with a fever. And he touched her hand. The fever left her. She arose and ministered to them. And when it says she ministered to them, it doesn't mean she preached. It means she made them something to eat. She, she served them. She waited on them. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Matthew 8, That's 16, quick when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word, and healed all, a double all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare Hallelujah. our sicknesses. I'll give you one more. Matthew chapter 9. Great story in Matthew chapter 9. Uh, Behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed, Jesus seeing their faith. Now we know from another chapter, another book, Mark, we, that that. This was a man that couldn't walk. And so four of his buddies, four of his friends made a stretcher and brought him on a stretcher. And when they got to the house to get him in to get Jesus to pray for him, they couldn't get in. There was such That's a right. big crowd. So these four guys just wasn't <laughs> going to take no for an answer. They crawled on top of the house, tore the roof up back and let him down right in front of Jesus. Right so no wonder he healed them. <laughs> so it says, it says they brought a man sick of the palsy, 
uh, lying on a bed and Jesus yeah. seeing whose faith? Their faith. Their faith. Now, I've heard many preachers say this guy on the bed had faith uh-huh. and Jesus saw his faith. That's not what it is. He may have been unconscious for all we know. It says Jesus saw their faith. Those See, faith men. can be seen. Faith demonstrates, faith acts. And it says, Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the man sick of the palsy, Son, cheer up. Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And behold, or pay attention, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For Now, this is great. This is powerful here. Jesus said, Which is easier to say? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or to say, arise and walk, you're healed. See, in Jesus' mind, it's the same thing. That's a mini story of redemption. Jesus is saying, if you're saved, if you're born again, healing belongs to you. I paid the same, I'm going to pay the same blood for, for healing as I am for salvation. So Jesus Jesus said, which is easier to say? You want me to say, your sins are forgiven? You want me to say, rise and get up and walk? Same thing to me. I don't care which one you want me to say. And then he, then he said, then he said, uh, arise. And walk. Oh, no, excuse me. To be, sins will be forgiven there. Say, arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. And when the multitude saw it, they marveled, they marveled, and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. I'm still glorifying God for the same reason today. That's the truth. That's such a wonderful story. That's a story. mini story of redemption. It is. Jesus said, which one do you want me to say? Right. If you want me to say, arise and be healed, I'll say that. If you want me to say, your sins are forgiven, I'll say that. It doesn't matter. Either one, you get, he gets healed. Well, and the proof of that, Terry, is not only where he quoted in that scripture above there that you read the next to the last one, that... That, that Isaiah spoke saying himself, yeah, bore our infirmities. Isaiah 53, <laughs> that he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. Absolutely. The chastisement, chastisement of our needful peace. to obtain our peace with God was laid on him. And by the stripes that wounded him, mm-hmm. we are healed. Psalm mm-hmm. 103 clearly tells us to not forget all his benefits. Who and, get, and think about this when you think about taking communion. He forgiveth all our iniquities. Yes and he healeth yes. all our diseases. Yes. The benefits of the covenant is in communion. When we take the grape juice, we're t- taking redemption for, from our sins. When we sure. eat of the bread, we're receiving healing for our bodies. Absolutely. It's a twofold redemption process. You've got some 103, process. 105, 107. They, all, they yeah. all just run right down that same, that same trail. I mean, it's just it's just in the covenant that we've been talking about. One of those in there was, and you know, when you were talking to that hitchhiker and you were commanding. I mean, you, you know, and he didn't understand all you were saying. So that's no. it's not that important for somebody. Now he understood and stood me because I'm speaking in Spanish, but he didn't understand the meaning of what I was saying. That's right. When I'm talking spiritual things, it went over his head. Well, and that's, you know, if, if somebody comes up to rob you and you start yelling in the name of Jesus and start commanding things, it doesn't matter whether they understand it. No. You're not witnessing You're not to, talking them. to them. You're, talking, You're to not the talking to them. You're talking to the devils that are driving them to do you harm sure. or to steal from you in some way. So it's you not your use, problem. They don't understand it. You use covenant principles yes. to fight hell with, and you don't back down. Yes. You deliberately pour on the coals again and again and again and again. And that's how important your voice is in both heaven, earth, and hell. Amen. That's you better exactly say right. something good instead of some crazy, goofy religious stuff. You need to learn about the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the word of God, all the promises that are in here for your health and healing, and then the covenant that was ratified by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And then... Count on the power of the Holy Ghost showing up to get rid of all that stuff in your body. Amen. That's exactly right. Hey, you know what? Before I get, uh, we start running out of time again like we always do. (laughs) uh, We're going to be going to Australia here in a few weeks. Right. The land down under. And uh, I love Australia. I love the people there in Australia. And we're going to be flying in there. 
and ministering on both coasts, on the West right. Coast and the East Coast, and on the yeah. South Coast. Right. You know, Australia is the same size as, as the United States of America is. It's 3,000 miles across and 1,500 miles deep. And uh, so we're going to be, be ministering uh, on, on the East, West, and South. Right. And uh, right. Be, be both in, in, in Melbourne down the South. We'll be in Perth out in the West. We'll be in, in Sydney, and then we'll be in the Gold Coast, and then we'll be in Brisbane. Uh, and so you guys pray for us. Believe God with us. We're believing God That's for good right. meetings, good uh, good miracles, good healings. That's right. uh, many times y'all have heard me say that the longest time I ever preached in my life, the longest sermon I ever preached was 10 and a half hours. Well, that was in Perth, Australia in 1982. That's and right. so a lot of those folks, those 82 Rama grads that I preached that to, they were there that night. A lot of them are going to be at our meetings when yes, we get there. Are. And a lot of them are excited about us coming. And so I'm expecting a move of God. I'm expecting their faith be rewarded. And That's I'm right. expecting to see God do some tremendous things. So set your faith with us. Believe God with us for the finances, for the budget of the trip. Believe God for the healings. Believe God for the salvations. Believe Amen. God for the miracles. Believe God that we can teach the word without compromise and it'll build people's faith and they'll stand up and, That's right. and get the That's job right. done. You know, they're, their government's being as goofy as ours, you know. And uh, so we want the <laughs> church to stand up strong. We'll be ministering for my great friend, Margaret Court who had a tremendous supernatural creative yes, healing hallelujah. in my meeting back in 1982. And then we'll be preaching from a dear friends, Tony and Patsy Caminetti. I've known Patsy since she's an 18 year old girl. And uh, Greg just love her and, and, and Tony and I love their girls. In fact, in fact, one of their daughters, uh, Liliana has married my nephew, Evan right. Brown, my sister's uh, son. And so we're kind of Creek kin, I guess. But I'm really looking forward to this trip to Australia. A lot of friends over there, a lot of people I've known for years right. and years and years. And, well, then, and then after that, we're still supposed to go back to the South Pacific and uh, be, at, uh, be in Vanuatu and, and be in uh, uh, Fiji and Pago Pago and Samoa and, and uh, uh, New Zealand. So we're, we're, we're just, we've got a pretty good full schedule, not to mention Europe and Malta and, and a pastor's conference I'm doing in Israel. Um, and the pastor's conference in Malta, the pastor's conference in Romania. Uh, as soon as we get back from Australia, we won't be home from Australia anytime at all till we go to Honduras. And both of us are speaking. I'm the keynote speaker at the World Convention for the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship, who's still around today. They used to be really strong in America. Now they're stronger overseas than they are in America. But uh, but I'm going to be the keynote speaker. And then they've got Renee speaking at the ladies' meeting. And then while we're there, we're going to do a one-day open air crusade with healings and miracles and deliverance and salvations. And that's going to be wonderful. And then I'm trying to put a pastor's conference together right now to follow those two meetings, to follow the two full gospel business meeting and the open air crusade. I'm like to do a pastor's conference for about three days. So we got a lot of stuff going and uh, just, we just covet your prayer, your agreement for the supernatural to take place. And like I said, That's for the it. budget That's of the all these thing. meetings and That's all these right. trips. So if you believe God with us and set your faith with us. Well, the world is in such a bad shape and, and the enemy is trying to take as many people as they possibly can to hell. And there are so many different facets of evil at work in the earth uh, through national governments, through people like the, you know, the, the UN, the WHO, <laughs> the CDC. I mean, you've got the World Economic Forum that just don't like people at all. And they would like to just get rid of most of us here on the planet. Oh, yeah. And we've got, to, we've got to preach this gospel around the world to let them know God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish. Would that means not perish. That means die and go to hell. Yeah. You know, that doesn't mean just die are, here on the planet. They are perishing, but God said they should not. That means go to hell forever. Yeah. And um, knowing that we just celebrated Easter a few weeks ago, that the whole purpose for the gospel being preached is that people don't suffer anymore. Exactly. That God exactly. wants to bring help, healing, recovery, financial blessing, everything. Joshua 1, 8, you set your hand to shall prosper. Yes. You know, the scriptures are so full of this is how you get out of this problem. This is how you get delivered from this disease. This is how you get your children uh, out of trouble. All of these things that are in the Word of God are, as you've said so many times, Darnan, they're not just promises, they're purchases. They're purchases bought, bought with the and blood. paid for by the blood yes. of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. That's our covenant. And that's why you go 
to the world. That's why you pray for your neighbors. That's why you're faithful at church. Yes, you're yes, learning yes. all of these things on how to pray, how to minister to, to people, operate in spiritual how to authority, trust God dominion, for your own life. You're in charge. Yeah. You know, the devil wants you tormented and spends your whole life praying over your electric bill. That's your whole, your whole basis world. of faith. Your whole world is praying for your needs. And you're better well, God, than that and bigger than that. Yeah. The Lord wants you to come up higher, raise your standard. Get to where you're you're trusting him to take care of everything you need. And then you're able to be a blessing to other people through your prayers, your Absolutely. giving, your hard work. You have a healthy body. You have a sound mind. You're able to do the work of the ministry. Absolutely. You know, that's why we're doing what we're doing. That's and why we're here. Healing belongs to you. Yeah, more than conquerors. We have this on our website and we send it out to all our partners, Terry, to mm -hmm. tell everybody on the different platforms where we are ministering the word of God. And there's been more added since that was printed. So. Huh? And there's been more added yeah, since that was added. printed. Yeah, there's more added. So um, our, our joy is to just help you in some way that we can. And so we're just on here every week just talking to you hard and fast to tell you one more time. You are more, more than conscious. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. Renee and I just want to remind you that the greatest miracle of all time and the only eternal miracle is salvation. You know, Christians say sometimes, hey, if you get saved, you live forever. Well, I've got news for you. You're going to live forever anyway somewhere, either in hell without God for eternity or in heaven with God for eternity. So uh, we don't want to leave without giving you an opportunity to, to give your life to Jesus, to accept him as your personal savior. The Bible says that we'll confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and called Jesus our Lord, ask forgiveness for our sins, we will be saved. It even says if you'll call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. So uh, let's just do that right now. Pray this prayer after me. Father God, I come before you today to accept Jesus. I believe in my heart Jesus is the Son of God. I call on you today according to your word. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and I'll serve you the rest of my days in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says you're saved, you're born again. So write us, let us know, tell somebody that you prayed with Terry and Renee and that you gave your heart to Jesus. We love you. God bless you. When I first got out of the Army, I went straight to, the, to Mexico, to the mission fields. And uh, I, I spent time with a missionary named Wayne Myers. Wayne's 100 years old this year, still preaching. And I ran into a lifestyle that absolutely pricked my heart, grabbed hold of me. I saw a, a man that was living to give. I mean, he, he, was, he was living his life on planet Earth with the purpose of blessing somebody, lifting somebody, embracing somebody. And I saw that. I said, ah, this is it. I, this is the, I'm, I'm embracing this. And I right there made a vow to God and to myself. And I said, this is how I will live the rest of my life, living to give because it's the very nature of God. So I want to encourage you to hook up with that same lifestyle of giving. I mean, embrace it, living to give. And you can give to your local church. You can give to other ministries. I've partnered with ministries since around the world since I was a teenager. And I tell you, God's blessed me for it. I wouldn't trade it. You can also partner with us. We're always happy to em embrace partners. We pray for them every day. But as long as you hook up with that concept, that lifestyle of God, living to give, then it'll be a blessing to others and it'll certainly be a blessing to you.